The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra has now been fully revealed and I'll be sharing the details right after this. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with the latest tech, please hit subscribe followed by the bell. You can also keep up on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. So we now have a huge amount of leaks for the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. We have a hands-on video to share, confirmation of the new S Pen features and the official launch of the Galaxy Note 20 series. Before we get started though, please like the video if you're a fan of the Note 20 series and let me know in the comments what phone you plan to buy next. First story of the day though, and a very quick one, is of course the official launch of the Galaxy Note 20. All the leakers have told us that it was going to be the 5th of August and Samsung have officially confirmed it with their new teaser video showing the bronze S Pen followed by Galaxy Unpacked August 5th. Next up, we've got a hands-on video of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and I have to say it looks stunning. Some of you may have seen my last video where Jimmy is promo shared with us photos of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and he's now provided a video. He starts off by showing us the phone in use and going through the settings where he confirms the model number of SMN986U and that his Note 20 is running One UI version 2.5. Of course, he stuck paper over certain aspects and that's probably to hide things that could identify this specific model. Next up, we've got the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra next to its predecessor and you can see it's pretty much had everything on the bottom mirrored with everything on opposite sides. Next, he removes the S Pen from the Galaxy Note 20 and its predecessor and he swaps them around to show us that size and design wise, they're exactly the same. To be honest, we weren't expecting the design of these to change much and only new features to be present. We then get a shot of both backs showing us that the Note 20 is a little bit larger but that's no surprise given it's got a 6.9 inch display. We then get a look at the new S Pen pointer feature on the Note 20 Ultra and it tells us we can press and hold the S Pen to move the pointer around on the screen like a mouse cursor. It's essentially a laser pointer but on your phone's display and it allows us to choose a color, choose the size and even choose a trail. While this does seem like a cool feature, in practice I don't think it's something that I would use myself. We then get a good look at the thickness of the Note 20 Ultra and we can see it is looking very thin. It's flat on the top and the bottom and the camera bump does protrude a fair way out of the back glass. Although many are complaining it's large, I really like the new camera housing and I think it is giving the Note 20 Ultra a very premium look. Now of course, Samsung won't just be delivering the Note 20 Ultra on the 5th of August, they'll be showcasing a host of other phones as well as the smaller Galaxy Note 20. For those of you that are interested, we're going to run through the specs and design of both of these devices to help you decide which one is right for you. And we're going to start with the Galaxy Note 20. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 is going to be the smaller device, coming in with a 6.42 inch OLED display at a resolution of 2345 by 1080, which gives us 404 pixels per inch. There's a lot of conflicting leaks when it comes to refresh rates, with many claiming the smaller Note 20 is going to come with a 60Hz screen, and many others claiming it will be a 120Hz display. It's going to have an aspect ratio of 19.5 by 9, be protected by Gorilla Glass 6, and it is of course a full screen display with an in-display fingerprint scanner and punch hole selfie camera. We still haven't had confirmation on the sensor that's going to be used for the selfie camera, but many are speculating that it will be the 10 megapixel pixel sensor that we're used to seeing. When it comes to the rear, we've got a quad camera setup on the standard Note 20. It's a 12 megapixel main, a 64 megapixel telephoto, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 3D time of flight depth sensor. Powering the phone is going to be the new Snapdragon 865 Plus in North America and a couple of other regions. Globally, however, it will of course be the Exynos. There's many claims suggesting that it could be the Exynos 992, which is a 5 nanometer chipset, but personally, I just don't think this is correct. Samsung are most likely going to be saving the 992 for the S21 and give us the 990 or at least an overclock version in the Note 20. Being the smaller version, it's expected to come with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gig storage, which is the same as its predecessor, and this seems plenty for such a powerful device. 
It's going to be powered by a 4,300 milliamp hour battery with 25 watt fast charge support, but there's unfortunately going to be no 3.5mm headphone jack. It's going to have Bluetooth 5, Wi Fi 6, and come with Android 10 in the form of One UI 2.5, and it will, of course, be 5G compatible. The Galaxy Note 20 is going to be IP68 water resistant, it will of course come with the S Pen and when it comes to pricing, although nothing's been confirmed, we're expecting a launch price of around $999. Next up, we've got the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The Note 20 Ultra is, of course, the largest model of the two, coming with a 6.9-inch OLED display at a resolution of 3096 by 1444. This gives us 497 pixels per inch, and it is, of course, a 120Hz display. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is going to be a full-screen display with an in-display fingerprint scanner and a punch-hole selfie camera. The display is, of course, going to be protected by Gorilla Glass 6, and while we haven't had it confirmed, we're hoping that the Note 20 Ultra is going to allow users to run 120Hz at the full Quad HD Plus resolution. When it comes to the rear of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, we again have the rectangular camera housing and a quad camera setup. The main camera is a 108 megapixel wide angle with an aperture of f1.8. It's got phase detect autofocus, laser autofocus and optical image stabilization. We get a 13 megapixel telephoto lens with an aperture of f3.4. This has phase detect autofocus, optical image stabilization and it's a periscope lens capable of 5x optical zoom. We get a 12 megapixel ultra wide with an aperture of f2.2 and again this has phase detect autofocus and finally we get the additional laser focus sensor. The camera setup is very similar to the S20 Ultra, but given the focusing issues that that had, they've replaced the time of flight sensor with the laser focus. They've also got rid of the 100x space zoom, as it was a bit of a gimmick and not much use to consumers, and they've now put a 50x cap in place. The Note 20 Ultra will of course be powered by the Snapdragon 865 Plus in the Snapdragon regions and the Exynos 990 or the 992 globally. It's going to come with 12 gigs of RAM and a choice of 256 or 512 internal storage. It's going to be powered by a larger battery and while the capacity hasn't been confirmed, it's expected to be between 4,500 and 5,000 milliamp hours. Again, we've got no 3.5mm headphone jack, but it will have Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 6, 5G connectivity and be IP68 water resistant. It's going to come with the S Pen and a new pointer feature, and while earlier leaks suggest that it would be called the Galaxy Note 20 Plus, we now know from certification that it's the Note 20 Ultra. So no pricing leaks have come forward yet, but many leakers have suggested it's going to be their most expensive yet. It's expected to be more than the S20 Ultra, so a launch price of at least $1,450 could be on the cards. Both Note 20s are going to be launching alongside other phones at the online-only Unpacked event on the 5th of August. For those wanting to tune in, it's going to be broadcast on Samsung.com as well as Samsung's YouTube channel, and this is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, which means 3 p.m. if you're in the UK like me. Of course, as more information comes to light, I'll be sharing it with you guys straight away. But as always, I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments. Who out there is waiting for the Galaxy Note 20 and which model are you waiting for? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash a thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and I'll see you guys in the next one.